Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, as we've already kind of introduced, uh, this idea of water was extremely important uh, to God's people. As they would gather for these joyous harvest festivals, again, they would make this long walk, and it wasn't like they just went out to the narthex. Uh, it was a little bit of a jaunt down to the pool of Siloam, and so a big crowd would move from the temple down to get the water, and then they'd go back up with the water, and there's a lot of time to think. A lot of time to think about what their needs were and what they are thirsty for. And uh, when most of the world uh, over time, and even still today, is agrarian, um, the, the, the longing for water, the longing for rain was significant for them. They were thirsty, and sometimes they would have the harvest festival, and it'd be, thank you, God, for the rain. It was a good year. And sometimes, thanks a lot, God, right, for the, the rain. Um, and we teach in Christianity, uh, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Uh, the Lord sometimes gives us abundance and sometimes he, uh, he, he gives us hardship and struggles. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, the nations around Israel, they operated a little bit differently. They thought they could manipulate God. If they would give God more offering, uh, then maybe God would send uh, more rain for them. And even God's people became tempted by this. They would give their offerings to the Lord God, and then they would go and give offerings to Baal and offerings to Asherah, and hopefully, right, one of the gods will send them some more water, some more rain. So, so seven days, right, they would go down and they would go through this ritual, and there was a lot of time to think. A lot of time to analyze their thirst, not only for their own sustenance of their body, but for their livelihoods and their care. And they thirsted and they longed for God to give them rain. Now, at the time of Jesus, things were maybe even slightly different. Uh, because sometimes you had a good year, and then you had all these crops, and you gave them to Rome, right? And then other times, you had a bad year, and you had your crops, and you gave them to Rome. And so, yes, they thirsted for water, but I would imagine they started to thirst for freedom. They started to thirst for overthrowing their suppressors, their masters, those who had controlled them. And so uh, they are filled with thirst, thirst for water, thirst for justice, thirst for everything to be right. They thirsted. And Jesus comes into the midst of their thirst and he says, hey, come to me. Come to me. Now I wonder for us as Christians, do we even so much recognize this thirst? Uh, I don't, uh, in my life, really remember a time where, uh, you know, I had to go a whole day without getting a drink. I mean, sometimes I'm in the middle of playing tennis with the kids and I want to go get the water bottle and I go over there and they're drinking it all, right? And then I can't get water until maybe like a half hour later when I get home, right? I mean, you get a little bit of a taste of thirst. Um, and, and even then, we have so much access to these things. But maybe when we remember how they thirsted for justice and they thirsted for the overthrow of Rome, we realize that uh, our physical thirst is just the tip of the iceberg. We thirst for so many other things. Uh, I remember uh, just kind of my experience last week of our opening up of worship. Uh, I'll just tell you, open up a little bit for how pastors think and how we tick, right? We want lots of people, but then we didn't want lots of people, right? And so it's kind of a struggle, right? Because we, we want that. And then I had to wrestle with Jesus and being like, is what I'm thirsting for really what I should be thirsting for? Because it's not about having a lot of people. It's not about good, strong singing, right? It's not about uh, the, the festivities and the seeing people. And, and, and really what we want is what I thirst for. I want things to be normal again. And Jesus says, hey, Levi, come to me. 
And then we think of all the things that are out there in our daily lives that we thirst for, uh, that are kind of just like little puddles, right? Little drips of water. And Jesus says, come to me, but we tend to just go to those things. No, Jesus, I'm satisfied with entertainment or activity or maybe working hard to make a little bit more money or improving my home or uh, getting a new car or whatever it might be, we thirst for those things. And so the question is, do we even really recognize that thirst that's in us because we get satisfied by so many little puddles that don't really fill us? And Jesus says to us, come to me. And I think it's interesting in the context of this, they're doing this exercise of pouring the water on the altar and they are thirsty. They're thirsty for justice. They're thirsty for their livelihoods. And you would think that they would cry out to God. But it's not they who cry out. No, Jesus cries out to them. He says, hey, recognize your thirst and come to me. God cries out to you and to me, and he says, hey, come and thirst. If anyone is thirsty, now there takes a little bit of spiritual brokenness in us to recognize our thirst. It takes a little bit of saying to God, you know what? I get focused on the wrong things. And all too often, I, I prefer my Diet Mountain Dew to water. Right? All too often I prefer uh, sports to water. I, I, it's amazing to me how much we sort of say, we need to get this back, right? Well, um, yeah, it'd be nice, but what we need is Christ. And so it takes a little bit of spiritual brokenness to say, you know what, I'm thirsty. Can you imagine in the crowd Jesus says, hey, if you're thirsty, come to me. I don't want to be the first one to raise my hand. And say, yeah, I'm thirsty. I want to say, no, I got it all together. I'm doing just fine. I don't need everything back to normal. Um, I want it, but I'm not going to tell you that. right? And so there's some sort of spiritual brokenness that says, yes, I'm thirsty. And I need you. And because we have such a hard time with that, (laughs) we know that Jesus calls and he invites. And some come. And some don't. Some say, yes, I'm thirsty and I need you. And some say, no, I'm doing just fine. But Jesus makes us a promise. And he says that whoever, right, whoever believes in me, there will be rivers of living water. That come, now there's some translation debate about this, whether the living waters come forth from them, right, or whether it comes forth from Jesus. Now, in the Gospel of John, I think there's a lot of reason here to believe, and and in some ways it works either way. But here Jesus is, in a sense, saying, If you come to me, there's rivers of living water that go out unto you. It's kind of interesting, later in the Gospel of John, there's this moment when Christ is on the cross and he says to all of you who are thirsty, he says, I thirst. All your spiritual brokenness, all your dry spirituality, all your brokenness that is in you, Christ takes upon him the source of all living water and he thirsts and he dies. And even in that moment, I think some who had kind of heard Jesus and said, okay, I'm thirsty, I'll come to you, uh, they even at that moment might give up. Wow, this seems just like another puddle, right? I thought you were going to overthrow Rome. I thought you were going to make everything normal again. I thought you were going to fix all my problems, God. I I thought if I came to you, I would have nothing bad happen again. Yet the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For Christ Jesus dies for you and for me. And they pierce him. And out of this parched, dry, dead Savior, blood and water flow. 
We celebrate today Pentecost, the fact that out of our pierced and risen Savior, there is a life and a spirit that goes out. Jesus says, whoever believes in me, there will be a living water that comes from within me. And Jesus is the center of the Holy Spirit. He breathes upon his disciples. Uh, uh, and he could have maybe took water and poured it on them. Either way, right? But the Holy Spirit moves and lands upon them and works within them. And they receive this beautiful gift. And they have life. And they have joy. Even in the midst of incredible adversity. And life never got back to normal for them. Uh, the Spirit came upon them and they became His witnesses to the ends of the earth. And most of them died for Him. But with the Spirit, they had life. And they knew that life eternal was theirs. And even in a parched world all around us, where there is mirage after mirage after mirage of oases of water, God gives you His people His Spirit. Why are we gathered today? Is it to see people? <laughs> is it to um, be back to normal? Why are we gathering even online today? Is it because uh, we're going after another mirage? No, instead God and His Word gives us His Spirit. And we have faith and we have life. I wrestle a lot uh, as a parent and I see a lot of things and maybe that'll change as my kids get older and off, right? But um, a lot of times I see it as a parent before I see it individually. Uh, I see where I don't want them to go after mirages, right? And then I realize, well, I'm going after the same mirages, right? But what, what my kids need is not, you know, another trip to the duck pond, although they like to go see the ducks, and I would probably be a bad father if I never took them there, right? And they want to go play tennis, right? Which is great, and I'd probably be a bad father if I never took them to play tennis, right? But that's not ultimately what they need. What they need is to have their thirst quenched by the living God and by His water of His Word. And then I say, you know what? <laughs> what I really need is not another hour on Netflix, right? What I need is not uh, a little bit more ice cream late at night, um, or what I need, and uh, I'll probably still eat it, right? But what I need, what Jesus says to me who is thirsty and parched, says, I have rivers of living water. If you are thirsty, come to me. Sometimes I miss Maybe the idea of the Old Testament, these real experiential things, right? Of going to get the water and pouring it out. I'd love to have you guys here for seven days, right? And we just talk about God. But here's the thing. We have something even better. In God's holy word, ever present for us. We have the life-giving gift and work of the Spirit. Who takes dry, parched, broken people and gives you life. That is what we need. That is what Jesus gives. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, may it guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.